As you approach the upcoming teaching challenges in the 2020-2021 school year, we recommend these valuable choral collections and classroom resources, whether you are teaching in person or remotely. Creativity will be key as we move forward, and as always, Stanton's is here to support you and your students. Thanks for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you soon. I'm excited to present our new resources. We have many reproducible choral collections for two-part, three-part mix NSAB voices, chorals that fit the need for young and developing choirs especially. Our newest one is Let Music Live, energetic and inspiring chorals for two-part choirs. I am always looking for repertoire designed to add energy, excitement, and inspiration to rehearsal and performance, and the need for solid two-part writing that is appealing from elementary all the way up to beginning high school or small high school. And I love finding a resource I can use all year long, and being reproducible makes us a real budget stretcher too. The book, it contains a full score, and with your digital download code, you have access to all your re reproducible singer parts, instrumental parts, and recordings. And this also includes playback, which allows you to adjust many aspects of the recording for all of your rehearsal needs. I've also included some rehearsal suggestions and even a warm-up that relates to each piece. All right, so let's take a listen to some of the excerpts from Let Music Live.
The Cambiata Collection, range-ready reproducible repertoire for developing TTB choirs by Lon Beery. Let every good fellow now join in our song, Viva la Compagnie. Success to each other and pass it along, Viva la Compagnie. Viva la, viva la, viva la more, Viva la, viva la, viva la more, Viva la more, viva la more, viva, viva la Compagnie. The transition from treble to changed voice can be a unique and challenging time for developing male singers. Dr. Lon Beery brings years of expertise as a middle school choral educator to this collection of eight carefully curated chorals, written specifically to meet the needs of young tenors and basses. Drink to me only with thine eyes and I will pledge with mine. Or leave a Within the cup, and I not ask for wine. The thirst that from the soul doth rise, the thirst the dream divine. Narrow vocal ranges for each voice part allow singers to find success as they navigate the shifting demands of an evolving vocal instrument. Reproducible student song sheets plus full performance and piano-only audio are available to download online. Partners in Song 10 playful partner songs for young singers arranged with new words and music by Mary Donnelly and George L. O. Street. Familiar song plus an original counter melody equals instant harmony. This fun filled collection gathers familiar folk songs, spirituals, and holiday tunes into a practical resource you can use on stage and in the classroom all year long. Reproducible singer pages included in the book make it easy for students to find and mark their individual lines, which are guaranteed to develop part singing skills. PDF song sheets and audio are included on the enhanced CD or download these assets online. Recently, we released a wonderful warm-up resource called 
Wander the World with Warm-Ups by Lynn Brinkmeyer, and I hope you have this in your library. Well, I am thrilled to present her new follow-up warm-up book, Wander the USA with Warm-Ups. These are 40 warm-ups using songs from all across the United States. And it is one of our new six by nine resources that is packed with educational punch. And here is the author, Lynn Brinkmeyer, to tell you more about this resource that is a must for every music educator. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Greg and everyone else. Thank you for this opportunity for a quick chat with all of you. I hope you're safe and healthy during all this sheltering. I appreciate the opportunity to share a few ideas about the most recent book that I've had printed, and it's uh, Wonder the USA with Warm Ups. And it's very similar to the Wonder the World with Warm Ups. I feel just a little bit like Van of White right now. It's built on the same premise. It has 60 lessons, 40 of them are songs with lesson plans. And the lesson plans are set up so that you can start with elementary students that are very fundamental if you have beginning learners. And then you can go more deeply into more advanced concepts. And so I use it with my youth course, with elementary, with middle school, high school. And I even use some of these things with my advanced women in the treble choir here at Texas State University. So these are ideas that I thought I would share with you, just a little snippet of things that you could do when you're in this online format in case we need to do more of this this fall. The first one is, Oh, Watch the Stars. It's a folk song from South Carolina. Oh, watch the stars, see how they run. So you can sing that as an echo song, have everybody mute except the teacher. So I'm gonna have you sing with me right now. I'm gonna have it as an echo song. I'll cue, I'll cue you. Oh, watch the stars, see how they run. So you can do that with the students. You can also have them sing it in different voices. Sometimes they love to do that. Now, I live in Texas, so we have to use a Texas accent. And then you've got the British accent, and you've got the 90-year-old man accent, and the three-year-old child accent. There's all different ways that you can do this. Let them come up with the different kind of voices that they want to use, their yelling voice or their whispering voice. Another way to take it another level is let them make up verses. Maybe you can show them, oh, watch the dog, see how they hit, see how they howl, pardon me. And if you want to let them make up their verses, they become the teacher. So everybody mutes, including me, except that one student, and they teach their verse to everyone else. Helps them be more creative and step up to being more confident leaders. The last thing I'll share with you is, this is actually about Jolly Miller, but I'm showing you this because of the extension. You can sing any song, it doesn't have to be Jolly Miller, and teach it. Everybody knows the words, they'll be able to sing it, it's a short folk song. Everyone sings the melody together. Then the next time they hum the melody and they, they tap the rhythm. Then they sing it again on solfege syllables. Then they sing it again by using rhythm syllables or if you do the count singing one and a two and a however you, whatever your choir or your, your choir or your students in your class are used to. Then have the teacher sing the melody. All the students do the solfege or the teacher sings the melody and all the students do the rhythm syllables. Or you can have this teacher sing the rhythm syllables and the students are doing the solfege. So at the same time, they're hearing one thing and they're doing something different and we're creating those independent musicianships. Okay, Greg, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Everyone, please stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you, Lynn. It is such an honor to have you in our Shawnee Press family. This book is called Music Mosaic, and it is a middle school music curriculum of 15 lessons that are exploring the music of America through project-based learning. How cool. I had to grab my highlighter for this one. There are so many creative lessons here that I can't wait to incorporate. One, for instance, soundtrack of my life. Love it. An instrument development lab, gonna do that one. Ukulele jam session, Trace an Ancestor. The list goes on and, oh, I just saw one. Recorded rap, definitely gonna do that one. There are 15 complete lessons tied to the national standards in here. And then she follows up with related one day activities for shorter weeks or substitute teachers. How perfect. Here's author Anna Wentland. Music Mosaic is a middle school general music curriculum for grades five through nine that is specifically focused on the development of American popular music. And it's meant to be student-centered and very much project-based. 
So for every one of the 15 units in the book, you're getting a day or two of introductory work where you set out a topic and explain the parameters of the project students will be working on. And then you're setting them free either individually with partners or in small groups um, to make decisions and come up with their final work together. The goal being that our, we're encouraging our students to take risks, to be vulnerable, and to really proactively create themselves, to, to make strong choices around their own identity. And that by having a student-centered project-based curriculum, you're leaving room for that kind of work to occur that your students are really making choices according to their own artistic intent. And it starts with self-analysis. So this whole curriculum, it's going to start with a unit or two that asks questions like, why do I listen to the music that I do? Um, what factors influenced the development of my own taste? And then for our society at large, how do we as a society come to define what's good or not? Um, how does a song stand the test of time? Like what are the factors that make a stand song last past just the year that it was released? And you're gonna do some projects around that, like soundtrack of my life where students make a, the soundtrack that represents who they are right now. And then we go back in time um, to the music that was being made in this in this land before Europeans arrived. So we'll look at Native American chant, students will write their own, and then we start to slowly introduce the styles and the music performance um, methods, the instruments that were brought here by other cultures, um, whether that's immigrants or slaves who were brought here against their will. And then about halfway through the curriculum, we start to introduce the uniquely American music styles that developed here as a result of the organic combination of those cultures. So you're going to look at jazz, at musical theater, at rock, at hip hop, and slowly kind of work your way up to present time. By no means is this, this book going to be a complete representation of all of the many, many, many music styles that exist in the United States, but it's a starting point. So I've made this curriculum myself for my own student body, and I would encourage everyone to supplement with projects according to their unique student bodies so that you're doing two things. You're making sure that your students are represented in the music that you're choosing for your classes and that they see themselves in that music. And that then you're also introducing your students to diverse voices and diverse music styles beyond what they would otherwise experience in their regular lives. I put together this curriculum over many years. So it started probably when I was in college and I I was in a very, you know, classical music-based program at the Crane School of Music, like so many of us are. Um, but I took a music history elective called American Popular Music with Dr. Nellie Case. I loved it. It was the first time I had really studied the music of my own country like that. And I brought that with me when I started teaching middle school general music. And like so many of us, I just started grabbing resources from books that I liked, from brilliant colleagues, uh, from state conference sessions, from summer workshops. Then they, you know, experimented and changed and developed and adapted and uh, ended up with what's in this book today. Approximately half of the projects in this book, I believe, would easily translate to remote learning. Um, unfortunately, many of them were designed to be project or partner work um, that you're doing, you know, with other people. But you just remove that component when your kids are at home. You'll introduce a topic um, either in person or uh, via a Zoom session, and then you're going to set your kids free to do their own work. And it, it really introduces a, a unique opportunity for kids to do introspective work. So if I were using this curriculum um, via remote learning, I'd focus in on those projects, projects where my kids are really um, digging into their own identity things like the Music as Protest project, where they're gonna look at the way music's been used um, to further support a cause, and then they're gonna make their own music event. Um, it could be a fundraising concert, it could be a march, it could be a protest, um, and produce a, a poster or an online advertisement promoting the event. So I would focus in on those those projects that are, that are student centered that are going to let kids on their own at home dive in um, and do some really deep introspective work.
One neat aspect of this next resource is that it's available as a traditional book in print as well as a digital download, which means you'll basically have 100 PDF activities ready to go out to your remote students. Here's Krista Hart to tell you more about Music Go Round. Hi, I'm Krista Hart. I want to tell you about my new book called Music Go Round, 100 Puzzle Pages for Young Musicians. This is a creative collection of 10 different types of puzzles, everything from coloring pages to word searches, music math to rhythm hunts, and it's covering concepts that you're already teaching in your elementary general music classes. Uh, this is great for bell work, simple assessments, lesson extensions, and of course for substitute teachers. When you purchase the book, you're also getting access to a downloadable PDF of all the pages. So that makes it really easy to use um, for projecting in a classroom, or if you're in a remote teaching situation, it's much easier to distribute uh, those puzzles to your students. I hope you find Music Go Round to be helpful and handy, and I hope you have a great year. Thanks. I had a dream so big in my Ukulele Explorer. 10 ukulele lessons with strum along songs by Daniel Bayert and John Stone. A must have resource for any music classroom equipped with ukuleles. The creative pair of authors, one a general music teacher, the other a private ukulele instructor, has assembled an amazing interactive journey to quickly get your kids playing a host of familiar pop songs, including Roar, Best Day of My Life, Over the Rainbow, Riptide, and more. To begin, touch any of the islands to navigate to a specific lesson. Each lesson starts with tuning the instrument, then introduces a chord and a strum pattern. Next, incorporate the chord or pattern into a brief exercise for isolated practice before strumming along with an engaging performance piece. The culminating activity for each lesson is an interactive assessment. In addition to the software, reproducible PDFs of chord diagrams, ukulele charts, and singer pages for each song are provided. Embedded with fret diagrams, hand position photos, rhythmic chants for every new pattern, helpful getting started screens, plus appealing demo and play along tracks, the adventure is only a few clicks away. Ukulele Explorer is compatible with all interactive whiteboards and both Mac and PC operating systems and can even be operated with just a computer and a digital projector. The software and PDFs can be accessed through the included CD or as a download. Visit alfred.com or contact your favorite music retailer for more information about Ukulele Explorer. I'm only one If you're asking, so what's new in the world of warm-ups, I've got the book for you. It's called Harmonic Warm-Ups, published under our Lawson Gould brand. Let's take a tour together. So here we are with some samples of Harmonic Warm-Ups by Tish Kramer. You can see that he's got nine different chapters with different warm-ups in there, different themes. There's Tish right there. And let me show you what I think is so neat about this book. Like most warm-ups, we start with a very simple melody. We're gonna do the one in gray here. It's called Floating Down in E minor. La, do, mi, do, la. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. And then you can start having some fun with this exercise. Listen to this as a canon in two parts where we enter every two bars. Okay. He also says, sing it entering after just one bar. Awesome. 
awesome. So some smaller harmonic intervals to tune. Now stack it in fifths and... Very cool. There's even more. You could stack it in fifths and sing it around at two bar entrances or one bar entrances. So all these neat things develop out, out of one simple warm up. This will be such good exercise for your choir. Let's look at the dissonant scale. C major, we're singing lu, 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 and then just down the scale on long tones, right? But you see, when we go into canon, we're actually going to get a, some pretty tight intervals coming down. These little arrows mean you may enter at canon points. Definitely here, optionally, a, a, a third line and a fourth line there. You want to hear what this one sounds like when it stacks up? I'm referencing some... Um, Recordings that come along with purchase of the book, you get access to these recordings so you can hear each and every one of the exercises. This is a warm up that's not only good for the voice, but very good for the ears, right? Let me go on. Later in the book, we start doing larger intervals. Here's a sequence with sixth melody that he offers. And it works beautifully in a three-part canon. And then flip it on its head. Here's a mirrored version. And yes, you go on to sing the mirrored version in a canon as well. From one to three is a little more homophonic singing, so you would assign bottom, middle, or top notes to various sections of your choir and sing V, 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 I can imagine myself assigning middle notes to the altos. Maybe your sopranos and tenors stay on the top. And of course, the basses would go down there. It would work well for SSA groups or really any voicing you just assign at will. And maybe on a different day or one minute later, we sing a different part of the chord that arrives. Neat way to work on tuning and landing into triads. I'm going to show you one more exercise here. This one is so simple to start with. Do, do, do. Everyone works on tuning those and singing it nice and slowly. And then you put it together and you get this very, very cool thing. This is called Chord with Four Notes. And here it is in canon.
you see that we've got some endorsements from Kirby Shaw, another from Kim Nazarian of the New York Voices. That is harmonic warm-ups, and I think it's just a wonderful warm-up resources for choirs that are ready to really think about stacking parts and tuning chords. A wonderful resource, harmonic warm-ups. Now, all of you may have the best-selling book by Tim Seelig, The Perfect Blend. What a fantastic resource this book has been ever since its first publication way back in 2005 and one I've used over and over again. You may also have these other books, The Perfect Rehearsal, which is actually one of my favorite go-to resources, as you can tell by all the marks in the papers. Uh, and then, The Language of Music. Well, it was time to give The Perfect Blend a little update, and I'm pleased to announce The Perfect Blend Second Edition. And I'm going to turn it over to the author himself. Here is the wonderful Tim Seelig to tell you all about it. Hi, Tim. Thanks, Greg. I'm so happy to be here with you today to talk about the second edition of The Perfect Blend. I'm really proud of the additions to the first one. If you own the first one already, you'll want this one. And if you don't, of course you have to have it. I've added in each food group of warm-ups, and as in addition, there are two chapters at the end, two brand new chapters that I really love. One of them is about warming down, imagine that. And the other one is titled, Perfection versus Connection. Can we have both? It's sort of an overriding view of what it is we do in the choral art. And we will continue the choral art. So that's it the second edition of The Perfect Blend. Thanks again, Greg. Thank you, Tim. We are all excited about this second edition of The Perfect Blend. Now, check out all of our wonderful 6x9 resources and reproducible choral collections. I know that these resources will help you navigate classroom as well as online learning.